guys, welcome back. Well, this is going to be a bit of an opinion piece, and I'm not going to make this video very long-winded, but you'll see in front of me I have a brand new Interstate battery and the old Optima battery that has let me down uh, more than a few times. And this most recent time, this here was the culprit, uh, so I really can't blame the battery, but I'm going to tell you which one that I choose uh, and why. Um, <clears throat> First of all, Interstate has a proven track record with being one of the most reliable batteries you can buy. And I decided to go on ahead since I had a coupon to get the Megatron, which is the, it's not a green top, it's a black top. You get a little bit more power. This one here has 800 cold cranking amps with 1,000 cranking amps. This one here has 720 cold cranking, uh, yeah, 720 cold cranking amps, 910 cranking amps. They're, they're similar in power. I'm going to tell you why I arrived at this decision. First thing I'm going to do, I just put 100% charge on this Absorb Glass Matte Optima. And while we let it kind of configure, it's already down to 85% and I just started the video, or just had 100% not too long ago. It's losing its power, or it's losing its um, consistency quite rapidly. Um, if I let this battery sit, and this is a rubber mat, by the way, that they're sitting on. If I let this battery sit overnight, it will bottom out right around 70%, 65% after it's had 100% charge. And that's not a, a speed charge, that's a 2 amp um, AGM setting slow charge. So it's definitely trickle charged, and it will just sit there and just discharge. Now, <clears throat> the reason why... I'm running with the interstate over this primarily is due to the fact that I've had nothing but bad experiences with these Optima batteries. I don't know whether it's a quality control issue or whether it's just a matter of I keep getting kind of a finicky batch or what it is, but with this muscle car, in terms of reliability, I'm rolling with an interstate. They've been proven time and time again for 60 years to be one of the best batteries you can get. Um, we just lost another uh, percentage point here on the battery, which really just equates to how much voltage it's sitting at. It's 12.5, it was at 12.9. Ideally, you know, 13 is where you'd like to be. 83 keeps going down. So that'll sit there and just slowly drain down to, there you go, 82. It'll just sit there and drain down to almost 65, and then it'll kind of flatten out, um, which directly, 82 which directly results in 81, uh, this not starting. So I'm running with an interstate. Here's the other thing I hate about these batteries, and I, and I hate bashing on them because I know there's some guys out there, girls out there, are going to say they love them. But here's the other thing. If these things go flat, you need to basically kind of piggyback them off of another battery to get a charge going. Now, you can kind of trick that, especially if you have one of these computer programmed chargers you can kind of trick it and just give it a couple of two amp you know trickles uh, for a few days consecutively to kind of kick it in the ass and get it to start taking a charge again but it's it's not really a matter of um, you know what the battery is made of it's a matter of reliability and durability this kind of crap right here is the difference between it starting or and getting you home or having to call a tow company which I just recently had to do and it was the fault of the alternator um, that caused my, my problem. This was not putting out uh, any charge. So this is going back to tough stuff. But um, previously to that, when this, when this battery was in my ridge line, it pulled the same crap on me. It, you know, I hadn't driven the truck in about four or five days. I went out there to go start it. There's definitely no, there's no draw on my car in my ridge line. I checked it um, for any kind of a, a short or any kind of a draw. There's no draw. The new battery that's in there right now doesn't have a problem, and I think it's an Everstart. It's just these batteries, and this is the second one I've had that's given me problems. So, without getting too long-winded, which I know I already have, the battery that I choose is going to be Interstate. I'm going to put this through its paces. I'm going to put it to the test. I am going to give you an honest review about it after, say, six months to a year um, with constant starts and tuning and everything else and see if this thing actually lives up to the hype. But... For now, this battery, which is an AutoCraft, uh, has proven itself to be completely reliable. This has been starting that big red truck that I have for uh, the last year now. 
no problems at all. If I go ahead and uh, connect onto here, just to kind of show you where we're at status-wise. It's been connected into the car all night, 100% charge. I did not put a charge on this battery at all. And it's beautiful, it holds it, it there's no problem at all. You know, this battery right here, you just saw it on camera losing almost 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts a charge just sitting here on a rubber mat. So, I don't know. I got a bad taste in my mouth with these Optima batteries. Um, some of you guys may dislike and say, no, Optima is the way to go. Maybe if you're running a rock crawling contest and you're tipping it upside down and you're going sideways and everything else, I could see the advantages to this. But other than that, there is no reason why you should have one of these over one of these. And that's my... God's honest opinion with putting shit to the test on a daily basis and wrenching on cars for the last five years. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. My opinion for what it's worth, take it, take it or leave it. Later.